Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm great. My people out here struggling, trying to make it in the state. Everybody out here knowing it, we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Keep that money in the power, never be fake. Stick the code side for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same power back to your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs that we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is this, but we can turn it to intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Voice TV. Hey, what's, what's going on, black people? I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. I want to say good morning to everybody. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. We'll give you guys time to come into the chat. Uh, take your time, take your time as you come in. Um, uh, Grand Rising's family says King. Uh, King Ja, good to see you, man. Um, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm going to send a message out to the, uh, to the family and let them know that we're live. Uh, if you want to get text messages whenever we go live, uh, just uh, text the word Boyce, B-O-Y-C-E, to 31996, text voice to 31996, and I will let you know whenever I go live and uh, you guys can join the conversation. Also, hit the notification bell uh, if you're on any of the channels. Uh, whatever channel you're on, uh, there should be a notification bell that you can tap onto that'll let you know whenever we go live. So, hey, Amir, how are you? Hampton here, congrats on the wedding coming up. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Candy Franklin, good morning, good morning. I got the notification, all right, very good, very good. Okay, so, um, uh, here's what I wanted to uh, kind of jump into. First of all, actually, before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know, um, I, I heard from Tariq Nasheed last night about his FBA conference for Foundational Black Americans. Uh, and uh, he mentioned uh, the idea of me stepping through. And uh, I don't know if I'm speaking prematurely on this, but I will say that I uh, support what Tariq is doing. Uh, no matter what uh, deal we come up with or what agreement we have, uh, I support uh, his FBA conference uh, because I think that we as black people got to understand that we can have more than one conference. You know, I, I saw uh, where the ADOS uh, leadership uh, felt that and some people say they don't have a leader. But if you don't have a leader, then why, why is your leadership constantly speaking up? Right. If you don't have a if you, if you don't have a leader, then why? Why are the leaders always running their damn mouths? Right. But the uh, but anyway, I saw where, um, uh, you know, the ADOS leadership were saying, oh, well, this ain't right. You know, you you having a conference and we supposed to have the only conference. Negroes can't have two conferences. We're supposed to just have one. We's the Negro leaders now. We're the leaders. And it's like, no, nobody is the leader. Nobody should be your leader. Nobody deserves to have the right to uh, tell you what to do. And uh, nobody has the right to tell you who to vote for either. So if he's, so if anybody starts getting into this whole like, okay, we want you to vote for the Democrat thing, or we want you to vote for the Republicans or whatever, be cautious of that because that's what happens. A lot of, a lot of movements start in the community. They start off looking very radical and revolutionary, but then they get to the point where it's like the same old stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, vote for Hillary. We need y'all to vote, or vote for Bernie Sanders in the next election. We need you to vote for Bernie Sanders. So uh, be very cautious about that. Um, make your own decisions. Uh, everybody out here, everybody out here in the public eye, including people like me, uh, we're not your leaders. Uh, we are your advisors, right? So if I give you advice that guide you to make good decisions, then uh, by all means, do that. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. I'm going to go over here and grab something real quick. But hit the thumbs up button, hit that notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and we're going to get it cracking real quick. All right. So, so what was on my mind today? Well, the topic on my mind today actually was uh, an issue related to uh, gender equality, gender equality. And the reason I say that is because Last night, I don't know if you guys saw the video I did last night. Uh, if you were here last night, say something. If you weren't, uh, give me a yes or no if you were here last night. Um, yeah, and uh, last night we did this interesting video, had a lively conversation about things that men think, or excuse me, that women think are turn-ons that are actually turn-offs. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that, um, you know, but uh, but that was that was the topic of conversation last night, and uh, it was a good discussion. It was a lively, you know, conversation. Um, I like talking about relationship type topics because I believe relationships are one of the most important things uh, that you can understand in this in this wealth journey that you're on. Most of you are going to be wealth be wealth building strategy. It's hard to main, it's hard to build wealth when you can't maintain relationships. For example, divorce is one of the most costly decisions that you can ever make, and uh, also it's not just a drain on wealth, but it's a drain on your emotional energy. If you're spending all your time 
argue with your spouse, you can't spend your time out here conquering the world, right? So, uh, you know, that's how we made the movie The Black Love Blueprint, uh, all about relationships. That was one of the first films that we put out for Boyce Watkins films. All of our films, most of our films have a purpose. You know, uh, the first film we made was called Resurrecting Black Wall Street, The Blueprint by Dorian Chandler, uh, which basically told the story of the Black Wall Street massacre. The second film that we made, and these films are all out there. Um, and, and if, in fact, if you go to the AB, abncdigital.com, ABNC Digital, AB, uh, which stands for All Black National Convention, abncdigital.com, you can actually find, you know, all of our digital, all of our films and stuff like that out there. So feel free to join that. And we have also we have lectures in there as well. So we don't just want you to be entertained. We want you to actually learn. So we made uh, Resurrecting Black Wall Street, Street the Blueprint. Then we made a movie called Democracy, a Black American Horror Story. Uh, Zaza Ali's in that one. Uh, Zaza, I don't work with Zaza anymore, but Zaza is, you know, a smart lady, a very smart lady. I know about the whole scandal and you all know I got to keep it 100. There was that whole crazy situation with her business and everything. And so um, I that was that was a little bit tough to kind of kind of observe. But I do think that, you know, despite whatever mistakes were made in that situation, uh, she had a lot of interesting insights in that movie. Uh, believe it or not, ironically, y'all going y'all gonna to laugh at me when I tell you this. The, the first person I made that movie with was actually Yvette Carnell. We actually shot that movie twice. Sometimes with movies, making movies is not. Shout out to the filmmakers in here. I just want to say this because uh, filmmakers are amazing people. I, I'm not. I don't consider myself to be a great filmmaker, uh, but I can't finance films, and I've done that. But I don't finance big budget movies. So like when I saw when Tariq did Hidden Colors and all the money he put into it, I was super impressed with that. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't go that hard with in terms of putting that much money into our films, but we do put a substantial amount of money in. Uh, and uh, I remember we made that movie and we shot it. It took a whole year to shoot it. And uh, Yvette Carnell was actually the original person I wanted in that film because uh, I felt that even though Yvette was different from me, even though Yvette, Yvette's the founder of, of ADOS, um, and uh, even though we're, we're very different, like she's very far on the left, uh, almost like communist socialist space. Um, and I'm not, I'm not so far on the left. I'm just black. I'm not conservative, liberal. I don't get into that shit. Um, I felt that the diversity of perspective would be good for the community. You know, I thought... That uh, that having a leftist point of view out there, you know, would be kind of cool in like a Noam Chomsky kind of way. Um, Noam Chomsky is the smart white guy who the, the people on the left tend to love, and uh, and so we made the whole movie over the course of a year. And uh, I won't go into detail in terms of what happened. But I'll say I was very disappointed, and I, I was I felt that you know I was I I, I had to, basically I had to do it all over again with Zaza Ali, and uh, and it just really burned me up because I lost a lot of money doing that. And uh, but, you know, but when you do a project and I'm sharing this with you guys, so you just kind of know what it is when you do business, you're not going to succeed all the time. You're going to have some disappointments. You're going to have some failures. You're going to have some shit that's going to like blow up in your face. But you got to keep going. You know, that's the key. You know, I'm telling you, in most people I know that are millionaires, billionaires, they just hit these crazy obstacles that will make most people quit. And they just keep going because that's just what they are determined to do. So we were determined. We got this film done. It's damn good. It's called Democracy, a Black American Horror Story. That's one of the films. Uh, we also made a film called Raising a Black Scholar. Tierra K.J. Williams directed that. Uh, Roosevelt Mitchell III, an educational expert out of St. Louis, was a big part of that project. Uh, that's all about homeschooling, all about the homeschooling movement, families that are doing, that are getting it in. Uh, you know, our core values, our core values are that we believe black people should educate our own children, create our own jobs, and support black businesses. Because I'm tired of waiting on white folks. I'm tired of hoping that the government's going to do it. I'm tired of waiting on these motherfuckers in Washington. Fuck all these people. Seriously, I'm, I'm just telling you. You know, and you ain't done shit for us already. I got one life to live up in this motherfucker. I'm going to live and I'm going to die. I'm not going to fucking waste my guy damn life sitting around waiting on white people to write a goddamn check i'm sorry no disrespect if you white i don't hate you you're welcome to come in here but i'm just gonna have to be real with y'all i'm not i'm tired of waiting for white people because i am not disabled black people are not handicapped we are not fucking retarded we are not broke busted mentally we can do whatever the hell we want to do and for all of us, you know, I think as a community, we pull our shit together, we work together, we love each other, and we bust our ass and, and commit ourselves to winning. We can't lose. Black people ain't never lost at any point in time where we were committed to winning. There ain't no time you can point to me any time, probably in the last 20,000 years, where when black people got together and said some shit was going to happen, that it didn't happen. So that's my, that's what I'm on. That's what I believe in. So, you know, I, I see all this going on, you know, ADOS. I see, you know, I, I, I told you guys I, I'm supporting Tariq's conference, the FBA conference. I'm going to go to that. I'm not going to the ADOS convention because I know too, I know where too many bodies are buried with that, with Kevin Cosby and the church and, and the fact that I feel 
that they stole that idea from Norris Shelton, a, a professor down in Kentucky. Go look it up. Don't believe me. Just go research Norris Shelton and his 80 and his DAS movement, his descendants of American slaves movement, which actually happened to occur under the nose of the pastor that that hosted you know, Yvette and Tone for their conference. It's too it's too similar and it's problematic because um, you can't disrespect elders by not giving them credit for what they did, you know, before you got here. You know, Dr. Claude Anderson was filing lawsuits on reparations 30 years ago, so I didn't understand why Yvette was attacking Claude Anderson. You know, uh, Farrakhan was fighting on, you know, for, for black people 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Why are you attacking Farrakhan? Nora Shelton has been running a, de a descendants of American slaves movement for 40, 50 years. He's right there in Louisville, Kentucky. Was he part of your conference? Did you give him credit? Did you acknowledge your elders, right? And I, and I think that that's very important, you know, because y'all, you guys all the time see me constantly remind you that without Dr. Claude Anderson, there is no Boyce Watkins, that I am birthed, that I am, I was intellectually birthed by uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, who is my intellectual grandfather. You know, he is the, he's the OG. He's the one that I pay homage to. I'm here in DC and I'm making, I'm visiting one person. Everybody else who comes to see me, see me, whenever I'm in a city, whenever I go to a city, people always ask me, uh, you know, hey boys, can we meet up for lunch? Can we do this? I don't leave my hotel because I'm always working, but you know what? Dr. Claude, so, so, so what I tell people is I say, hey, if, if I can meet with you, here's my hotel address, meet me here. And that's what I do. Claude Anderson is the only person in this city where I'm like, you know what, let me get in, let me get in a car and I'm going to ride out to your house. I'm going to go to your house and I'm going to knock on your door and sit in your living room and listen to you talk as long as you want. You could cuss me out. You could talk to me about life. You could do whatever you want because I love you and I respect you because I know without you, there is no me. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, when you, we see all these movements popping up and shit like that, because y'all saw me real quiet about a lot of the shit. You know, I, I saw, you know, Yvette had this voice well, is a bad person. He's a dirty capitalist. He's this, that and the other. And I just was quiet because I didn't want to really I don't really like that drama. But at the end of the day, it's like now that people are really into this stuff, it's time for me to really be honest in terms of what I've seen and what I know. I know these people very well. I've watched every, how everybody moves. And I just don't think disrespecting the elders is how we roll. We don't roll like that as black people, you know. So I think the elders should be acknowledged. All the people who built whatever they were doing before we got here, they have to be acknowledged. You cannot act like you did this by yourself. That's the problem for black people. That's why that's another ideological challenge I have with these movements they want to disconnect us from Africa. Stop acting like you 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 just got here yesterday as a people. You didn't just get here yesterday. You didn't just arrive on slave ships and that's the beginning of your, your of your existence. You had thousands of years in Africa before you even got here. So why can't we love Africa and still love ourselves and still fight for reparations all at the same time? I I, I just don't get that. It, it's all very weird and very confusing to me. So so when I see people disrespecting the elders it kind of bothers me a little bit because uh, I see people stealing people's ideas and and then taking them as their own because you know how to create a fucking hashtag. Well, fuck you and your hashtag. And at the end of the day, um, you know, it's black people. I think that we have to find a way to uh, to build and use teamwork and work together. And uh, and we can also exalt those who open the pathways for us to be successful. So that's that's my two cents on things. Um, and then here's another crazy thing. Just just as a little tidbit, a little side note uh, with the ADOS movement. One thing that's really fascinating is you saw, um, you know, Yvette and Tone, they were attacking. Uh, I remember they were they were attacking me as a I'm just a dirty capitalist because I'm not broke. I guess I'm, I wasn't broke like them. So it's like, oh, you're not broke. You must be a dirty capitalist. Right. You attack, you know, Tariq Nasheed. Oh, he's just a dirty capitalist. Right. Whatever. You say what you want. It's cool. But then and then but then it's funny, though. Right. Because you notice Tone is real supportive of Byron Allen. Suddenly Tone is like go support Byron Allen. We must back Byron Allen. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't back Byron Allen, but Byron Allen, you know, you, you went after, so you went after me for being a dirty capitalist. You went after Tariq for being a dirty capitalist. You go after Jay Morrison in the Tulsa Fund because they're, because he's a dirty capitalist. But then suddenly, a bit, the biggest capitalist of them all, if he's a capitalist, right? Uh, Byron Allen, who's, you know, worth hundreds of millions of dollars, about probably 50 times, 100 times more than Jay Morrison and, and Tariq and all of us put together. But yet suddenly he's your homeboy. And suddenly, you know, he's he's driving the ship. Why is he driving the ship? Well, where is you know, when when Tony is doing his little videos now, where is he? Um, where is he doing the videos from the griot? Who owns the griot? Byron Allen. 
Well, that means that you have a master now and that that's going to be whatever Byron wants is what you're going to now want. And I think that's the problem with all the ADOS movements and stuff like that. Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Walter says you stay very calm while that was killing your name. Thank you for your, your do donation, by the way. Yeah. You know, and, I, and and it's fine. I mean, I understand it, it with this game of ego. I'm not. It's like, OK, yeah, they're, 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 you know, they're saying these crazy things about it, but I'm going to keep just doing what I do. And I think that's ultimately the best approach to things. Just let your light shine and let other people react to your light. But I think, you know, there's a point also where. You know, it's like, OK, now that we're getting into the nitty gritty of politics and we're talking about voting and elections and all that, be very careful, because what a lot of these motherfuckers are going to start doing is start telling you who to vote for, which makes them no different from the same white people who manipulated you up until, you know, since the beginning of time. Um, I will never tell you who to vote for. You guys know I've never said go vote for this person or that person. I've always told you what I'm going to do. I've said I'm not voting, but you do what you want. I, I love you regardless because I don't think voting really matters. I don't give a fuck who you vote for. Also, other issues, LGBT type stuff. I don't know how Yvette feels about the LGBT stuff. I know she's part of that community. She's gay. That's fine. I don't care. But at the same time, so but these things don't matter to me. What matters to me is are you black? If you're black and you believe in blackness and you believe in building, then you then we should be talking. If you don't believe in those things, then we then I don't know what we have to talk about. Right. So so ultimately, um, I, I I talk to some people, some people I don't talk to. Uh, I talk to Tariq um, and uh, and I support what Tariq's doing. Uh, but that, that does not mean that me and Tariq think each other uh, are perfect. You've heard Tariq. Uh, you've seen Tariq say things where he's hinted to you that he does not agree with everything that I say. And I don't take it personally. You've heard me say things where I did not agree with everything Tariq had to say. Right. But he doesn't take it personally either. And that's to me, that's what you have to do. You can't get to the point where you think, oh, well, that Negro told me that he didn't like my shirt. So I'm going to go kill that motherfucker. Because then what happens is you lose natural allies. Right. So that's 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 my point. All right. So let me move back. Let me let me jump into this. <laughs> let me jump more into the conversation. 16 minutes and 39 seconds in. But there you go. In fact, I should probably spl splice this into two videos. Right. Because I think um, I think that that Norris Shelton issue needs to be researched. Uh, Norris Shelton is an OG. He's in his 70s. He's been working for 50 years on a DAS, Descendants of American Slaves movement, right in Louisville, Kentucky. He studied under Pastor Kevin Cosby, who I introduced Yvette Carnell to, where in Cap Pastor Cosby hosted the ADOS conference. He's hosting the next one at Simmons College in Kentucky at the St. Stephen's Church. So it, it's not to me. I, I just find it. I'd really like to understand how it is that, you know, that in the very same city where you're hosting your conference, there happens to be a black man who has worked on a movement that is remarkably similar to your own. And he's been doing it. He was doing it before you were born. I hate, you know, I hate, I, I'm just laying it out there. Don't take my word for it. Don't even like say like voices theory is this. Fuck voices theory. Go research it and figure out what your own theory is and come to your own conclusion. And then y'all can just check back in and let me know what you think. Uh, and, I, and actually, I'm going to try to interview the brother on his, on his channel and just see what he has to say about all of this. Because I because one of his very close friends emailed me and said she was very offended that this whole national movement has been pushed. And it's been she felt like it would have been co-opted, kind of like the Me Too movement. A black woman starts it for black girls and then suddenly white women grab it and they start running with it, making it to this whole other thing. Well, that's some bullshit, man. That's some that's just bullshit. I, I don't know if y'all I don't know if y'all get it. I mean, tell me. Tell me what you think. Tell me, do you right or yes or no? I mean, do you even think that this is even something that should be discussed or you think I'm just being an asshole right now? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm being an asshole. So but I'm done. I'm done with that now. All right. So moving on. Um, with that said, uh, here, I'm going to give you guys a list. Now, yesterday I told the ladies hit the thumbs up, by the way, if you haven't done this, uh, do our black power exercise, please hit the thumbs up button, share subscribe button, or, uh, or at least subscribe in the notification bell and then type black power in the chat. Let me, let me know you did it on the count of three, one, two, three, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Everybody please hit the thumbs up button. Also hit the subscribe button and, or the, um, notification bell. All right. So let's see, let's move on. All right. So here's what I did. You know, yesterday I felt kind of kind of bad because I had ladies that felt some kind of way <laughs> over it. Well, it wasn't that the women got mad, but I felt I personally felt like it would be fair um, to follow up with this video from yesterday by doing a, a similar topic, you know, switching the genders around. So basically um, yesterday I was I went through a list and this was a list that was actually given to me by people who were on the um, who were on the. Um, uh, who are on my Instagram page. My Instagram is the real voice Watkins. And I asked them, I said, give me name things that women do that they think is sexy, but it's really a turnoff. 
And so I did that yesterday for the women. And so we kind of went, we kind of had fun making fun of like women that think they're sexy and, but they're really not like when they put on like a ton of makeup and they look like homie the clown, but they think they looking sexy, you know, but they have a really, you looking like, you know, that, that, that clown from the movie it. Uh, well, you know, so basically I did the same thing with men and I was cracking up. I'm just going to say I was cracking the fuck up when women were actually stating the things that men do that where we think we, we really think that we're being sexy. And it's like a turn off. And I find that hilarious. So, ladies, uh, give me a yes or no if you if, if or actually type turn on or turn off in response to each one of these things I lay out. So I'll start at the top. Uh, Sharita says sticking their tongue out and wagging it. That's such a nasty turn off. So so when a man sticks his tongue out, I'm not even going to do it. I, I was going to do it. But that would that would be kind of gross. Um, is that a turn on or a turn off? Let me see. Tiffany says turn off. <laughs> turn off. Turn off says Diz. Turn off. Okay. <laughs> I don't see a single turn on. So when a man pulls out the tongue, that does not get you going. That doesn't make you think about, you know, the, what the tongue can be used for. Okay. That's good to know. So fellas, like take notes, man. Like we, we got to take notes. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Tina says, <laughs> stare at themselves in the mirror way too long at the gym and then take a selfie while listening and singing out loud, holding up three stations while they're doing their reps. OK, so I guess it almost sounds like a like a narcissist kind of thing. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, here's one. Juanika says continuously talking about how much money they make. Turn on or turn off. So, ladies, type in the chat and everybody who if you're not a woman, just just watch what the ladies are saying and let me know and, and, and learn from that. Like, pay attention. We got to listen to women. Like, that's how you can understand women. You got to listen, man. It's very important. All right. So lots of. OK, I see lots of turn offs. All right. Let's move to the next one. All right. Um, oh, <laughs> well, I, I, this one's easy. No Malanga, no Malanga from Fly Newbie and Queen TV made a comment. She said, sending random women dick pics. I think if you're sending random women pictures of your penis, you probably need some mental health. Like you, you probably need therapy you, and you probably, you might need to get arrested. Like I, I don't, that part I don't get it. So, so, so rather than asking the turn on or turn off question, so, so most of y'all ladies, I'm sure are going to say turn off. And if you say turn on, then that means you might need help too. But anyway, I want to ask you guys, ladies this, because I'd be curious to know about this. Because apparently from what I've gathered from talking to my female friends, the things that happen in a woman's DM are very different from what happens in a man's DM. Like that women get hit up, you know, in the DM in a lot of crazy ways. So I want to ask the ladies uh, with a yes, give me a yes or no on this. Give me a yes or no. Has a man ever sent you a an inappropriate picture of his you know what in your DM? Has that happened to you? Give me a yes or no. Yes or no. <laughs> Almighty says that's sex offender shit. Yeah, okay. Karen Watkins says yes. WWAD, no. Siobhan, yes. Uh, okay, let me see. I'm going to slow this down because I'm seeing a lot of the response. Let me see. Karen, uh, let's see. Siobhan, yes. Nay, Willis, yes. Malville, 12, yes. Uh, Tessa says yes a lot. Oh my God, this is y'all getting assaulted up in this motherfucker. Let me see. Um, Kita says no. <laughs> Cheryl says yes. Uh, of course, no. Okay, Second Life, no. Vanessa, yes. Mary Golden, yes. Christina Rue, yes. Spider B Walk, Web Walker, yes. Rogue Six, yes. And he and I blocked his ass. Pro oh, interesting. Wow, this is very interesting. Okay, and I, now I'm seeing some no's. Test Test called Life says no. Don't mess with those people. Um, okay. So let me tell you about what one of my friends did. I had a friend who got a, um, a pic from a guy he, he, and he kept doing it. He sent it two or three times. And, um, so she said, so she basically was like, okay, since you want everybody to see your, your junk, uh, she put it on her page and she tagged him and said, so-and-so, whatever his name was, wants everybody to see his, his penis. So here's a picture of his penis. And he, and he was like, Take it down, please. Please take it down. She's like, no, no, no. You want everybody to see your dick. So I'm going to make sure everybody gets a chance to see it. So she put it up there on the Facebook page for everybody to see and tagged him so that everybody would know whose page to go to. And um, and, and, and maybe maybe that's part of it. Right. Like like here's a funny thing. I'm just thinking about this. I think the Me Too movement. I don't like the Me Too movement. You guys know this uh, because I think it's, it's, it's sort of this subtle way to uh, you basically take down black men and really really any powerful man but especially black men black men usually go down first and uh, and it's unfair because sometimes people have consensual sex and then they act like it was some sort of assault when to me consensual sex is not assault they're not the same thing but 
one thing, one good thing, if, there, if you were to extract something good from it, and there are probably a couple good things you could extract, but one thing that comes to mind is sometimes when you put somebody's dirty secret actions and you pull them out into the light, it changes the game on them. It flips, it flips shit on their ass, like real quick. You know, like like they like they really kind of you know like like they you know they change their behavior or or they they sort of have a moment of reflection and clarity because you just body slam their ass by putting their shit on blast. And I I, I actually think that's good. And I'm a believer that I've always believed this that you shouldn't let people kind of molest you in the dark, so to speak. Meaning it's not just I'm not talking about just actual molestation, although that should be called out when it happens. But I'm talking about just people fucking with you, man. You know, racism. You know, a lot of times when we go black people, we have jobs and we get we're victim. We're all victims of racism on the job. Almost every black person in here, I'm sure, will say if I, you know, I've asked you guys before, have you been a victim of racism on the job? Everybody said pretty much everyone said yes. Well, you know, when I went through the racism, like when I was at Syracuse University. I didn't know if I was going to win the battle against them. I knew I would probably get blackballed. And that was hard to face because I was in school till I was 31 years old to get that PhD because I wanted to use it to make money for the rest of my life. And um, and the way you usually make money is you work at universities and they pay you pretty well, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. And so that was really a scary thing to let go of. But I remember just saying, you know, I don't know if I'm going to win this battle or not. But one thing you're not going to do is you're not going to molest me in the dark. You're not going to you're not going to mistreat me and have me and then scare me into silence because I'm so scared of being blackballed. And I'm afraid that if I speak up, I'm going to be identified as a dangerous Negro and I'm going to they're going to give me a hard time. No, fuck you. Fuck that. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm, no, no, no. I'm telling everybody what you did to me. I'm, I'm sharing emails. I'm sharing, you know, conversations of correspondence. I'm, I'm, I'm laying statistics, facts, data, arguments, everything. And then what I'm going to do at the end of the day. Is I want everybody because I don't because I'm not out here lying. I'm gonna have I'm gonna just tell them I'm gonna say look go look into it yourself. You know that that you know because that's the thing I think you know when people come out and they complain about stuff the first thing people say is hmm, are you really telling the truth is this a personal agenda right and are you trying to just get back at somebody or whatever and so I think a good way to kind of alleviate that is to say no actually go look at it yourself. I'm just telling you where to look. I'm not telling you what to what to think. I'm just telling you where to go look for information. And then you make your decision. You know, uh, in fact, because you know how they do when you're black on a job and they tell they try to fire you or whatever. They first thing they do is like, oh, you're not qualified. Oh, you did this and you did that. And uh, and, and, I, and I remember because a reporter called me when I was um, fighting with Syracuse, you know, about the job and all that stuff. You can go Google. It's all out there. I'm sure, sure somewhere. And uh, and I remember the reporter was like, well, they claim that you're not qualified because you did blah, 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 blah. And, and that you did this, and you did that. And I said, OK, I said, how about this? I'll make it easy for you. I said, let's assume I'm not qualified. Let's assume I'm the biggest asshole on the planet. That way we can get that conversation over. Make that assumption right now. Write that down. Voice is not qualified. He's not a good man. Whatever the fuck you want to say. Now, what I want you to do is since we've decided that it's not about me anymore, I want you to go look at them. Now, I want you to go ask them. Why haven't you uh, promoted a black person in the in the field of finance in the last 120 years? Why is it that you have the 80 percent, 70, 80 percent of your departments have never promoted a black person? You know, why is it that, you know, and I just went down the list. Right. And, and so ultimately, you know, I think, you know, that that's what actually the Republicans do this. Um, believe it or not, uh, in the movie, Get Me Roger Stone. Uh, one thing Roger Stone said that I actually thought was interesting. He's a he's a complete Republican. He's he's a Donald Trump guy. So I don't have much in common with him, except for the fact that he actually said that the only person President Trump should pardon is Marcus Garvey. He actually said that it was the most random shit in the middle of an interview. They were like, you think President Trump's going to give you a pardon? He said, I've told the president the only person he should pardon is Marcus Garvey. And black people were like, er, what? Like, how do we get in that conversation? How did Marcus Garvey get in that conversation? You know, but but one thing he said was um, he said, never defend, always attack. You know, just always attack. And so I don't know. Anyway, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the thumbs up button, the share button, the subscribe button. And uh, can you speak on the Kanye West making shoes in the United States? Um, I didn't know about that. I don't know. I'm going to look that up. So what he's saying, he's only going to make his shoes in America. I think that's good. Um, actually, there and actually, I'm really proud of uh, Victory Boyd. Go look up Victory Boyd. She's an extraordinary singer. And um, she was actually at a couple. She sang at the first two all black national conventions. And I also put her on. Uh, one of our Facebook pages, and she went viral from there. And literally, I saw her recently at a at a concert, 
And uh, and she's all glamored up now and everything because she's such a great singer. And uh, and she said that after we put the video on the page, it would after it went viral. That's when the people of Rock Nation started paying attention to her. And actually, she's such a great singer. Jay Z heard her sing and was like, he signed the whole family. He signed her and her entire family like at the same time. So she's actually going to sing at our wedding. So if you want to come to our wedding. Uh, Alicia and I are getting married July 11th, 2020 in Chicago. Everybody's invited. So everybody can come out. Uh, so anyway, let me let me read some more of this stuff here. Um, so I'm reading on my Instagram, The Real Boyce Watkins, if you want to uh, if you want to jump in. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, OK. Um, bragging about what they have to try to impress you. Um, I think we talked about that. Uh, ladies, that turn on or turn off type turn on or turn off. Uh, in that, if, when a man tells you how much money they have, or how much uh, power they have, or what they can do for you, does that turn you on or turn you off? Turn on or turn off? Let me see. Okay, I see a lot of turn offs. All right. Um, <laughs> Kiara says buying something that's expensive, but the gas tank is on E. Um, throwing out names, not actively parenting their child. Speaking negative about the mother of the child. Mm, that's deep. Interesting. Now, there's not a lot of people that responded to that comment. But what what do you think, ladies? Is that, is that a turn on? How about this? Turn on, turn off, or I don't care. That could be the third option. So if a, if, a, if a dude is speaking negatively about the mother of his child, does that turn you? I assume it doesn't turn you on. But uh, is that a turn? Is that a direct turn off? Or is that one of those like, I don't care? What do you think? Lakeisha says that pisses me off. Elise says that's a red flag. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I tell you, you got to be careful about somebody who talks really, really, really negatively about people that they used to love, you know, because if they love you in, in the moment, that means that when they don't love you anymore, that's how they're going to talk about you. Like people are pretty consistent in most situations. Um, they want you to believe it's a one off. Like I'm only you know, the only reason I wish she was dead is because she's such a bitch. Right. When the reality is, you know, maybe he has some sort of mommy issue and he wishes like 80 percent of his exes were dead or 80 percent of his exes are dirty ass you know, gold diggers who are trying to betray him. Right. So you got to be real careful about how you talk about your exes. That's my point. Because if, if smart people, if you everybody here who wants to be smart, let me just tell you something that I think will make you smarter in life. I, I'm, I'm 48 years old, so I, I have a little bit of OG status. So I'm going to share this with you. Um, if you want to be smart, don't just pay attention to how people treat and talk about their friends. Pay attention to how they treat and talk about their enemies. Pay attention to how they talk about, you know, the people that have done them dirty. Pay attention to how they talk about people that they no longer have any use for. Right. Uh, I don't really care. Like, and I, and I've learned this. This is one thing I've actually learned from being like, like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not, I, I don't consider myself a celebrity type, but, but you know, I go places and I get attention. I'll say this. And what I notice is that when people get around me, they'll treat me a certain way, but then I'll, I'll watch how they treat people that can't do anything for them and they'll treat them totally different. If I, and I'm telling you, if I see that, like, or if I find out like that you treated me wonderfully, but you were peeing all over my assistant or trying to, so, you know, figuratively speaking, I, I'm not going to want to talk to you anymore because that pretty much tells me what kind of person you are and how you're going to treat me when you no longer have anything to gain from being associated with me. So ultimately, you know, that energy, you know, you got to watch out, watch how people treat everybody. Like, so I think for ladies, I would watch everything about a man. Like, how does he, how does he treat his exes? Cause I might be an ex one day. Right. And, and if I'm, if I got his child, you know, I don't want to be, you know, treat it like crap. How does he treat his mama? I think how, how a man treats his mama does matter. You know, I'll, you know, like, for example, I think a man should, you, you should be opening doors for your mama. You should be, you know, calling your mama. You should be, you should be concerned about how she's doing. You don't want to be a mama's boy, but you, you don't want to just leave your mama out to dry. You know, um, you know, how does, how does he talk? How does he talk about his enemies? You know, it, you know, if, if he has enemies and he's like, oh, I want to kill that motherfucker. I'm going to murder that mother. Like if he's a kill, like a killer, like I've known women who literally dated men who are actual killers or who have wanted to actually kill people. And I've been like, what would make you think that he would never want to kill you? Because if he gets pissed off at you, you're going to be next. Seriously, because you're dating a killer. Just pay attention. All right. So let's keep going. Um, 
<laughs> Callie says, licking lips profusely. She says, just put on some chapstick and call it a damn day. So what do y'all think? Yes, and turn on or turn off. Turn on, turn off, or don't care. Uh, lick when a man licks his lips profusely. Turn on or turn off, or don't care. What does he teach his children? Yes, absolutely. What is that's important too? Okay, Lakeisha says that's nasty. Oh, that's right. You know, I think I asked about lips earlier. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm being re repetitive here. Uh, walking. Okay, Latanya says walking around in draws with a big belly. Turn on, turn off, or don't care. What do you think, ladies? Turn on, turn off, or don't care. And fellas, it, I'm, I'm talking more so to the ladies today. I want you guys to take notes because we got to learn how to love these black women right. You know, so if you find a woman that you want, you so you know how to impress her and make her happy. All right. Let's see. What's what else is here? Um, let's see. Texting. Tanika says texting gets on her nerves. Does it bother you when a man's texting on a regular basis? Okay. Uh, JS Marielle says turn off. Uh, highly, highly favored says turn off a few licks, but not constantly. Okay. Okay. So Kinsley, Kinsley's mommy. So she, she got a little freak in her. That's okay. Everybody does. It's all right. That's what makes you human. Um, <laughs> organic Libra says, yuck, you dig? That's funny. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Um, staring Teresa Bochamp says staring, but not saying hello. Just staring is creepy. What do y'all think? When a man just kind of looks at you and he's like sending you vibes across the room. <laughs> what do y'all think? Okay, Tawan says I'm guilty. And by the way, guys, have you done any? Have you ever done any of these things? Have you learned something today? I, I'm asking the fellas, like, are you learning something from this, or is this like old news for you? Or what do you think? Like, are you learning? I, I think it's good. I, I read this book called um, What Women Want Men to Know by Dr. Barbara DeAngelis. And that book changed my life because it really got me realizing that men and women are very different. That was that was probably my biggest takeaway is that men and women are not the same. And that if you think women and men are the same, then you're going to make a lot of mistakes, male and female. Um, Teresa says blowing in your ear. OK, turn on, turn off or don't care. Turn on, turn off, or don't care. But when a man blows in your ear, what does that do for you? Okay. Uh, Test Call Life says, nope. Jazzy Diva says, get some courage. Oh, get some courage. Stop staring. Like, come over and actually say hello. Well, y'all got to smile, too. Shit. I mean, it's hard. I, I'm just going to tell you, I think a lot of men are, are a little nervous about approaching a woman who looks angry. Like, she looks constipated. You ever see somebody that looks so mad that they always look like they just got to take a shit? Like, like nobody, want, no man is attracted to that. Like, that's not, nobody, no man is attracted to a shitty woman. Like, just keep that in mind, too. So just smile a little bit. Just friendly, friendly smile. Hi. But then again, the friendly smile can be tough because sometimes men misinterpret the friendly smile. And the next thing you know, he's like stalking you and creeping you out and following you around. And guys, y'all got to stop that, too. Like, that's, that's just not, that's not cool. Like, if a woman doesn't want you around, like, walk away. Um, let's see. Dan says, LOL. If we don't smile, we're not interested. Abort mission. <laughs> Stop the sagging, says Jeremy. Yeah, the sagging. Well, that's something. I, I know my gen. I, I don't think my generation gets the sagging, but maybe that's something eighteen year olds get. I don't know. Um, oh, Monira says possessiveness. She doesn't like possessiveness. What do you think? Turn on, turn off, or don't care. Possessiveness. If, if a man is really possessive and and jealous and just very much, you know, like, you know, like, who is that guy? And get away from him. And why are you talking to him? How does that make you feel? Turn on, turn on, turn off. I don't care. Oh, Vanessa says run. Yeah, you got to be careful with that. I, I know people that have been killed like that. Like, literally, I, I literally know people who've been killed in relations. Like, so, so take it seriously. Like, if, if somebody... You know, if somebody goes over over the overboard with love and they get into that creepy love category, those are not people that you want around you because, you know, if you, if you decide to break away, it's not going to be easy to do like you're because you you leaving them. It's not so much about love. It's more about the fact that they see you as a possession. Like, think about it, you know, like just because I love you doesn't mean I care about you. Right. Loving somebody and caring about them can be two different things. Like, I love my car, but. I don't care if I got a better car, <laughs> I would dump the car. Like I'm not going to feel guilty if I dump my car and get a better car. 
right? I'm going to get a better car. I actually want a Tesla at some point. You know, once I once I feel like I'm, you know, ready to go buy one, I, you know, the money's there. I just I just would rather invest the money. But at some point, I'm going to get me a Tesla. And guess what? And when I get the Tesla, the car I have is going to be thrown out. Right. So just remember that love is not love. Somebody loving you ain't the same as them caring about you. You can love a possession. Like, I love my car. I love my house. I love my shoes. Right. So just remember that. Uh, what's the name of the book again? Uh, the book is called uh, What Women Want Men to Know. And she interviewed thousands of women about a million different things. And gave, she gives you lists. The top 10 things women hate. The top 10 things women love. You know, and it, it blew my mind because I remember thinking, wow, you know, women like this stuff. And I called my female friends and I'd be like, I'm going to go down this list. Tell me if you like it when a man does this. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I like it when you do Ooh, Oh, that's a, that's a good one. You know, and, and so it just really showed me the men and women are very, very different. OK, so let's see here. Uh, Tanisha says the turn off is when they try to come over. Um, Love Leisha says uh, when you brag about how many women want you, like what I what you think that'll make me lucky. You chose me. My inbox is full. Uh, made the best man win. That's what she said. She's oh, she says my inbox inbox is full, too. May the best man, man win. OK, well, just remember that the best man may not be an available man. Those are two different things. So you got to keep that in mind, too, You know, because a lot of men, uh, some women don't notice, but a lot of men have an insatiable appetite for women. So you have one guy that can literally be talking to 40 women at the same time and always have room for another one. You know, so just because somebody wants you doesn't mean that they're available to give 100 percent of themselves to you. Same thing with women, too. You know, you meet women and you like her or whatever, but she might have five or six dudes that she's talking to at once. But one thing I've learned from the science, of, from reading the science of attraction um, is, because I read a lot of this stuff when I was writing my book, Financial Lovemaking, back in 2006. Um, you know, I've learned from the science of attraction that women had, tend to have more um, oxytocin receptors, which oxytocin creates bonding and bonding drives like commitment, right? That's why you'll see situations where a woman will be with a man who's got four girlfriends, but and she could have four boyfriends, but she doesn't want four boyfriends. She kind of wants him. Um, and, and from what I, my theory, my theory, again, just take it with a grain of salt. If it sounds like bullshit. Then just ignore it. Um, my theory is that men and women are built differently when it comes to the desire for monogamy. Like they're just built differently. It doesn't mean monogamy is a bad thing or outdated. It just means, you know, men and women are different. Let's just say that. In fact, testosterone is a neutralizer for oxytocin. So um, testosterone tends to make men more assertive. At worst, it can make them aggressive or um, or sometimes even violent if we have too much of it. That's why a lot of times the domestic violence rates are highest, like, you know, in the households of like just aggressive men, like athletes and shit like that. Football players punching their wives in the face, you know, like like testosterone is a real thing. But testosterone is also very attractive for women, you know, and you can see a man's testosterone levels just by looking and looking at him like to men with high testosterone. They might have more chiseled features in their face, muscles. That's testosterone. Uh, you know, aggressiveness, like, you know, like that's testosterone. So testosterone is important for manhood, but too much of it can make you hyper aggressive and almost to the point where it feels predatory because like a high testosterone man might have just this infinite sex drive and be chasing all the women and, and want all, you know, just want everything, just, ah, you know, get mad at the drop of a hat, right? So too much testosterone is bad. That's why they with like steroids. But that's what steroids do. Steroids boost your testosterone, which might make you a great football player, but it might not make you a good human being. And it certainly can make you a bad husband. Yeah. Alpha male. Alpha males tend to have high testosterone. Right. So. So there's like a balance. And the reason older men, I believe older men can be more appealing for women is because older men still have they can still have their testosterone, but it's not spiked through the roof like it was when they were 25. You know, when a man is like, you know, 40, 45, I believe. You know, actually, your testosterone levels drop about one percent per year after the age of thirty five. So after thirty five, men become a little more measured and more level. That's why you have the older men that should be mentoring the younger men, because the younger men are like, I'm pissed. I'm gonna go kill him. I'm gonna go. We're gonna ride on that nigga. We're gonna shoot it. We go, bah, 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 you know, whatever. Right. And the older guys like, OK, calm down. Let's think about this. Let's talk about this. Right. You know, like, are you really you know what's going to happen if you go kill him? You know, you're going to go to jail. This is it. You know, so that's why mentors are also important, too, because mentors, because they have more of that balance, are able to chill and get the younger guys to kind of slow down and chill out. Right. So testosterone is an interesting thing. It's, it's worth studying. I encourage you to kind of read up on it and, and oxytocin and all that. And, and, men, and I'm convinced I'm completely convinced from my research that men and women are not the same. 
and that this whole social engineering agenda by the liberals to convince you that gender is a figment of your imagination is complete total bullshit. Men and women are not the fucking same and they don't want the same things in relationships and they never will. And they'll, and they will never completely understand each other. But if you, but in my opinion, if you're thinking about it, like everybody in here, I don't, who in here is looking for somebody who would make a great mate who in here, you know, if I told you you were going to meet the girl of your dreams or the man of your dreams tomorrow and I can hook that up for you, how many of you would be interested in that? Give me a yes or no. If you are open to the idea of of attracting the, the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams, right? Hey, yes or no? Give me a yes or no. You know, somebody say yes. Okay, good. I see some yeses in here. All right. Okay. Well, here's the deal, right? You know, this is me thinking as an economist, as a businessman. Um, the person that you're trying to um, attract and connect to, you know, you're trying to make a sale. You're, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to, you know, to do a trend creates what they call utility. Utility is basically happiness, right? right? Like, like their theories, there's whole, there's mathematics behind all of this. And I did all this stuff in grad school where basically they show that when, when, you know, like if Britain and France are not trading with each other, the utility of all the people in Britain and France goes down. That's why when you saw Brexit happen, uh, when Brexit, when England said, we don't want to be a part of the European Union, they lost a tr over a trillion dollars in wealth like that because they lost a lot of utility from the fact that they benefit by connecting and trading with the rest of Europe, right? So if Britain and France decide not to trade with each other, they both lose. But if they do decide to trade, then everybody can win. Utility tends to go up, right? And, and, and the same thing is true when dating. Like when you're dating somebody, all you're doing is you're making a trade, right? You're, you're like, look, you know, I'm I'm a handsome man with some money and a, and a, and a nice penis and 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 I and I'm a good person and and I could be and, and I could be a good protector for a woman and there's some woman who's like I'm a sexy woman who, who stays in good shape and and I know how to love a man I can cook a good meal and I can love him you know into the night or whatever it is that he that he wants well you two should be together you two should be hooking up right and meeting each other so you can engage in a trade like you got what I want I got what you want and then we get we give each other what we want and everybody's happy right so that's why um dating apps do so well they're worth you know these dating apps become worth billions of dollars because they're initiating trade which increases utility which also has a high connection to economic value as well people will pay money to meet the man or the woman of their dreams so dating is a lot like economic theory it's very deeply connected so here's my point i'm getting to if you want to engage in trade whether it's a man trading with a woman or a company trading with a customer, right? You're, you're trying to sell cheeseburgers or a new car or, or a service. The number one thing you can do if you're trying to make a trade or make a sale is to understand your customer, right? Like they tell salespeople, like, look, don't run in there just talking about what you got and how good the price is and how amazing it is. Listen first. You got to listen. Listen and learn. You know, a lot of salespeople, I'm not a sales expert, but a lot of salespeople, first thing they do is they come in and they, they, they say, hey, how can we help you? Tell, tell us about your company. What are your needs? What, what do you need? Right. And then they say, oh, well, we're having a problem because our technology is off base and we need somebody who can manage our, our computer algorithms. And Oh, well, well, let us you know, we have something here that we think can help fulfill that need for you. Right. And the person's like, oh, OK, great. Let's do it. So at that point, you're not even really trying to make a sale anymore because they want you as bad as you want them. But if you come in there assuming that you know what they want, right? And that's what people do when they do bad dating. They assume that you must like what they got. Like, well, look at me. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, so, you know, I've heard women do this, right? Like, look, I look good and I got an MBA and, and, and I'm this, this, and this. And, and, and you're assuming that the man wants all of that, right? And you're like, I don't know why I'm single because look at how good I look. And, who, da, da. and you're assuming that the men who meet you, that they want what you're offering. And really, they might want something totally different. You ain't even thought about that. Maybe he just wants you to be a decent person instead of being a bitch, right? Or same thing's true with men. Like men will run up in there with, with you know, bragging about how much money they got and how they can do this and do that. And then I got power and I'm connected to this person and I can, girl, I can do this for you in the bedroom. Let me lick my lips for you. And maybe she doesn't want that. Maybe she just wants somebody that can, you know, that can like listen to her talk about her problems. You know, maybe she wants somebody who just wants to do Netflix and chill with her or or take go on trips with her or whatever it is, right? She may want something other than what you're offering, but people will run up in there offering their shit and thinking and like what why don't you want this? Like look at all you don't why would you not want all of this? Right? And so <clears throat> so what I learned is that if you if you are trying to find 
the optimal mate, the best thing you can do is to first of all understand the op the other you know the other gender, or if you date the same gender, that's fine. I'm not judging. It's, it's okay, right? Figure out what people want, right? And then when you meet a person that you like, figure out what they want, and then be the best version of yourself that you can be, so that they will desire what you have. You know, figure out what they want and fit to that. And 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 so to some extent, that's catering a little bit, which is okay. Um, I believe also in, in things that people don't believe in anymore. Like they talk about submitting to somebody. Um, I submit, I submit to Alicia all the time. She submits to me all the time. There's a million and one things I could tell you that she can't, she doesn't like that I do, but she submits to that because she loves me and she wants me to be happy with her. And I submit to her. We have, you have to do that. You know, ain't no such thing as a relationship where you could just do whatever the fuck you want anytime you want. And people are just going to love you regardless, no matter what, and just, just be happy all the time with whatever bullshit you bring to the table that just doesn't exist you know so um so that that's 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 my two cents i think um those who are looking for a mate i i found more i've seen that people have more success when they take the time to study the opposite sex the same way you study in a class you know you you, you the, your relationship who you choose to marry and all that is probably the most important decision that you'll ever make but it's probably the one that people spend the less time researching and the less time actually preparing for right you spend four years in college but you only spend a few minutes really trying to understand men or understand women so that you can know exactly what you're looking for. You can set your own standards, of course. Like, in fact, if you are able to fit the criteria of the people that you're seeking to attract, then you get to name your own price because then suddenly you've got options everywhere and you, you get to pick which one you want at that point. Right. So make yourself desirable, you know, make it make yourself desirable. And I think part of it also just starts with basic shit like not being an asshole. You know, you got a lot of assholes out here, man. You got a lot of people out here that just, you know, just, I don't know, man. It's weird. Like, like they really, like, they, like, I'm like, right, you really think you're a strong black woman because you cuss everybody out at, at the drop of a dime? That's not a strong black woman. That's like some sort of evil barracuda. Like, I don't want to be around that shit. Or same thing. You got guys out here just talking about women like they ain't shit. You know, so called conscious men just dissing the shit out of black women on a regular basis. And I'm like, what makes you think that that any woman would find that appealing? And if a woman does find that appealing, chances are she has no self-esteem because you should treat a woman with respect. Like, why wouldn't you do that? That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, so anyway, um, I'm done with my rampage for the morning. I hope you I hope that you benefited from some of this. I hope that you guys <laughs> I hope this was helpful to you um, because I, I want you to be happy. That's it. I, whatever it is in your life that you're looking for, uh, if you're already happy, then that's good. But if you're not happy, just know the solution is out there, but you got to take the time to go research and 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 consume information and and know that that somebody knows the answer. It might be in a book. It might be you know advice you could get from somebody who's done what you're trying to do. Like for example, if your goal is to have a marriage that lasts fifty or sixty years, then you better go fucking talk to some people who've done it, so they can really tell you the real deal instead of feeding you a goddamn fantasy. A lot of people get fed these fucking fantasies. That's why you see the divorce rate so high. Seriously, that's, that's my theory. My theory is that the divorce rate's high because people got fed fantasies. And then when reality does not match the fantasy, they give up and walk away. No, that shit ain't no, fa ain't no fantasy. I watched my parents stay married 45 years and that was some shit. Man, that was some shit for your ass. I'm telling you, it was like, wow. <laughs> like, I, In fact, it was so much shit that literally I was like, ooh. I don't even know if I want to go through all of that. Right. I had to think about that, you know, so just just know that, you know, it ain't easy. You know, it ain't easy. All right, guys. Uh, so, by the way, if you want to know about our movie, we actually have a movie on um, love and relationships and all that. We actually made a film on that. It's called The Black Love Blueprint. It's actually on Amazon Prime. So if you want to go check it on Amazon, it's uh, The Black Love Blueprint. You can watch the trailer at the theblackloveblueprint.com. That's the theblackloveblueprint.com. Uh, we're going to make a part two. Uh, Alicia and I decided that we wanted to kind of document some of the stuff behind the scenes in terms of as you know as we're preparing for the the what we call what we we like to affectionately call the black royal wedding. We actually want to do a royal wedding that's black, you know, a vast display of a black man loving a black woman and vice versa. And so um, uh, I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but we are working on that now. Um, and uh, also. Um, um, and last but not least, uh, we have some seminars coming up in the Black Business School on estate planning and also one on how to be a government contractor. A lot of money's made that way. So if you're interested in taking a look, feel free to go to drboyceseminars.com. That's drboyceseminars.com. So we are on the move. There's a lot of stuff happening. So feel free to participate. And we're very happy to talk to you guys. Doc, is this your first marriage? Yes, it is. Um, and it, it was planned that way. I didn't. I, I thought I might get married maybe in my mid to late 30s. 
but I did not want to get married in my 20s because I researched it. And I, I basically saw a lot of my friends that got married in their 20s had a hard time. Uh, I was a really ambitious person. I mean, really ambitious. I wanted to be top student. I wanted to go accomplish all these things. And I wanted to be an entrepreneur eventually. And, and the hard part was that I couldn't quite figure out how to fit that in and still be a good husband at the same time. I know that maybe, maybe in hindsight, there's a way I could have done it. But at that time, I couldn't see what that solution was. So I made a plan to get married about 38 or 40 years old, you know, um, and, I, and it's just my choice. And that's what I do also believe, like, like live your own life. That's probably the best advice I can give you is the best advice I can give you is to take your own advice. You know, like, like, like literally, you know, people always fucking a dime a dozen motherfuckers always want to tell you how to live and what rule you're supposed to conform to and how you're supposed to do this and how you're supposed to do that. Man, fuck them. That's your life. That's your life. You got to live with that shit. So, you know, take advice, consume the information, listen to people, listen, you know, older people, they're, they're good for something, right? They're very, like when I sit and talk to Dr. Claude Anderson, I listen. I, I just, I just don't say a word and he does all the talking because I'm literally trying to soak up game from 85 years of life, right? Like that's power, that's wisdom. But don't think for a second that I'm going to do every single thing he tells me to do. I don't do that. I don't have to. Right. Because I know at the end of the day, I make the fucking decision. I make the decision on what to do next. But I'd be stupid to make the decision without getting advice, without hearing from a multitude of perspectives, even from people who disagree with me um, on what the next step needs to be. You need to be able to. The best way to see life is to have vision where you can see everything that's coming from all angles, all perspectives. In fact, the reason I sound like such a weirdo online, the reason I'm so different from a lot of people, I, I know I'm different. It's OK. I embrace that. It's because a lot of times I live my life as an 80 year old. I look at my life. I'm 48. I look at my life 80 years looking back and I say, OK, I'm 80 years old. Looking back at my 48 year old self, what should his next move be? And this is something that just came from the way I, you know, from the way I was trained, like in mathematics, there's actually a technique called dynamic optimization, where they actually say the way to make the optimal decision in your next step is to actually go to the end of the process and work your way backward as opposed to just you know, moving one step after the next. So, so ultimately at the end of the day, um, get advice, make your own decision. Don't let anybody tell you how to live your life. I think that's really, really important. Uh, cause I see a lot of people live in somebody else's life because somebody told them what to do. And next thing you know, they're miserable. You don't want to be miserable because if you're unhappy, you've lost the game period. All right, guys. So do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, please. Before you go, uh, uh also please hit the subscribe button. And uh, thank you, Sheldon, for the, your kind words. I appreciate that very much. And Hannah and 50 and Zynga and Lori Pepper and Black Entrepreneur 24 and Marcus Garvey. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. And um, and I'll keep you posted. I'm, I'm going to call Tariq today about uh, coming to his FBA conference. I, I hope we can work out some kind of a deal that works out. And um, and I just, But I just felt compelled to tell you guys that I support what he's doing. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a brother having a conference. Uh, black people can have more than one conference. We are allowed to do that. Uh, white people gave us permission. We're allowed to have more than one conference. So stop acting like we only need one conference for black people. Like there's going to, there can be plenty. There can be another thousand conferences and we will still be okay. All right, guys. So uh, hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Talk to you soon. Peace.